a nonprofit medical research organization, and what I've got with me right here is the life suit number 14. What we're trying to do is create a robotic suit okay, now that we're opening up the floor allows paralyzed people the ability to walk. The prototype we have in front of us right now, with this big old tank here on the back, runs on compressed air. And uh, using pneumatic cylinders, we've got one for uh, each of the joints. Um, the person who started They Shall Walk is named Monty Reed. He was injured in a parachute accident in 1986. Uh, what happened was he was on a night training mission with the Army Airborne Rangers and jumped out of a perfectly good airplane. And what happened was uh, someone, uh, the parachute had the air stolen out of it when someone got too close to him. He hit the ground pretty hard. Uh, was in the hospital for about a year. Uh, during that time, he had a lot of time to think and a lot of time to read. And someone gave him a copy of the book Starship Troopers, which has this sort of group of super soldiers in it wearing robotic suit. And uh, from that, he got the idea, why not take a suit like that and give people who are paralyzed the ability to walk? And at that time, he was basically thinking of himself. Well, he was able to regain his ability to walk boy, through uh, rehab, oh boy, and uh, but in 2001 he made the first prototype. It was just a leg at that I time, what it does. and uh, now uh, in 2007 we're up to prototype 14. And I've also got prototype 15 here with me. Uh, prototype oh 15 is going to be our first version that will actually have electronics on it and be able this to balance on its own. It's also the version that we're, uh, it's going to be a dual purpose and the idea is going to be for a rescue worker like a firefighter or something along those lines to be able to carry a lot of weight. Uh, basically the firefighter, all of his equipment and hopefully some specialized equipment so that uh, someone like a firefighter they can go into a burning building, have extra equipment with them that they need but they don't need like three or four guys to carry it, go in, they can cut out, you know, beams, material in the way, whatever, get in, get out, and that. Um, we're having a fundraiser, a walkathon, October 27th in Shoreline, Washington. If you'd like to come and join us, we'd love to have you there. Thanks a lot. I, there is an official person. She was already great before she had lots of practice. The robots that we see here that are coming on to the course are first robots. These are the first robot challenge robots. The robot that we have here, this, the white one is... I broke my back in a parachute accident 20 years ago. While I was in the hospital, I was on the suit with myself. I recovered, and in 2001, I built the Ladies and gentlemen, while you're waiting for the next world, I'd like to come up. I'm on my big show walk booth. Monty Reed will be getting into a exoskeleton life suit that he has developed over the last nine years. Come on by and uh, take a look at a real robot walking with a human being in it. Monty Reed is formerly paralyzed from an airborne parachute accident where he's lacking in rehabilitation in a hospital and rehab facility. He has the opportunity to read Ryder High on the Starship Trooper. Captain 7 of Starship Troopers talks about troopers of the 21st century wearing exosuits, which will give them superhuman strength and the ability to live sound. They'll never be able to get out of the wheelchair. What do you see is Monty walking inside his prototype number 15. There's been 14 other exoskeletons before this. Each one is a paradigm leap forward and it's taken the box as well. We started in 2001 and it's now 2007. If you come by our table, you'll see exoskeleton 15, which is currently on our dry dock. That one will be able to walk on its own, completely computerized, and will be the next step before number 16, in which we'll be actually able to put a paraplegic individual in the suit and start him walking. This will be our test pilot phase, which we're currently signing up throughout the world. We just opened up our new land up in Shoreline, and because we are a totally uh, charitable foundation, we survive on donors and sponsors to our cause. Currently, one of our